Have him come in. Private Evans, come in, please. Yes, sir. Sit down, Evan. I want to talk to you. I understand you're leaving us. Yes, sir. I finally got my papers, and I'm going home. Good old Wyoming. A little better than Tarawa, huh? And the jungles of the Philippines. That was the longest three years of my life. But it would have been a lot worse if I hadn't had the memory of the most wonderful country in the world to think about. You know, Doc, no matter how bad it got, I always knew that someday I'd be going back. Evans. I'm going to give this to you straight. That occasional blurring you've been complaining of. I'm afraid there's nothing we can do for it. You're gradually losing your sight. In time, months, a year, perhaps sooner, you'll be blind. By comparison, you're more fortunate than some of the others. At least you know what's coming. You can prepare for it. You can stay on here, take a course in Braille, our course of study and training for the blind, and when you leave, we'll see that you get a seeing-eye dog. I know. Hard to take. But when you do leave and return home, you'll be prepared to properly care for yourself. Braille, training for the blind, the seeing eye dog. What use would a seeing eye dog be in a country where a man judges the distance by the horizon? Where a man can ride all day without seeing another soul? Where the only creatures that live inside are caged birds? What use would a seeing eye dog be on a branding job or a cattle roundup? No thanks, Doc. If it's all the same to you, I'll settle for a one-way ticket to Laramie. According to what you've told me, there isn't much time left. Every second has to count. From now on, all I want to see is where every tree and every leaf and every blade of grass is in the country I love. As you wish, Evans. The choice is yours. Maybe not practical from a medical and viewpoint. Uh, Doc, whatever reports you have to put through on me, please hurry them. Sure, I know. Wonderful country, Wyoming. I was up there once myself. Never seem to be able to forget it. Don't worry. I'll arrange for that ticket immediately. Thank you, sir. Goodness, you're all right. <laughs> you look great. I feel great. You know, you don't look so bad yourself. <laughs> Thanks. I got a big surprise for you. A Jeep. A Jeep? Ain't she a beauty? A real bargain. War surplus. Well, that makes me feel right at home. I kind of thought it would. <laughs> You might find it a little strange at the ranch at first, without your mother being around. It was hard losing her while you were overseas. When I got your cable, we've been deep in the thick of it for days. I made up my mind that if I ever got out of that scramble, I'd spend the rest of my days with you. I missed you, Lon. We need you bad at the ranch, and from now on I'll be dependent on you a lot. Yancey and Lim are both laid up on account of a wild horse that we finally corralled. Near kill both of them. Watch it, will you, Dad? Yeah, thanks. This is a good car, Lon. 
Misses all the bumps. Yeah, I can see that. Hello, Lem. Howdy. Mighty nice to have you back. My boy, it's good to see you. It's good to see you, both of you. I thought you were a cinch for the Army, Lem. So did I. I was all set to go in, but I couldn't pass my physical. The Army couldn't stand competition from the sideshows. Ever see a bull-legged, pigeon-toed cowboy with flat feet? <laughs> That animal. I don't want you laid up too. That's Chuck the new hand. He does everything the hard way. Chuck's all right. Ordinarily, he's a good hand. It's just that wild animal. And he's just sealed his doom. I was willing to give him another chance, but not now. I'm gonna get my gun. He's a mighty good looking horse. Uh -huh. Don't let the looks fool you. He's the funniest critter we ever had on the plains. I like his fire. because the boys could see him so well at night. He knows he's parked back. Just look at that horse. He's not only mean, but tricky. He's just baiting long so he can get him in that corner and stomp him to death. Mom! Mom, get out of there! You think you're pretty much a boy. I used to think I was pretty tough, too. You're not gonna go cutting up just because they're all expecting you to, are you? You just take it easy, we'll get along fine. After all, you know, you and I've got something in common. I know what it is to be doomed, too. Starlight. Star and light. Say, so you've given me an idea. A star does kind of light the way, doesn't it? What you need is a friend right now. And I know I'm gonna need one later on. Why don't we get together, huh? Go ahead and sniff around a little. I'm not gonna hurt you. When Lon turns his back, that horse will kill him. so rough with you boys. I guess you can put away the gun, Dad. That horse can be handled. 
Not by me. I don't want any part of him. Neither do I. Well, then that makes it simple. I need a horse, so I'll take him. You're making a mistake, Ron. He's unpredictable and dangerous. As a colt, he was no good. Before we even had a chance to break him, he fought his way into the hills and turned completely wild. It took us two years to capture him. Only to find he was plumb local. Even his sire was violent and stubborn. You remember his father, outlaw. He never could be broken and finally had to be shot. Well, that's no reason to condemn him. He didn't choose his father. Dad, you wouldn't punish me for something you did, would you? No. <laughs> no, son, I wouldn't. I'll start breaking him tomorrow. Yes, sir. You and I are going to get along fine. out there every morning at dawn working with that animal. Just wait till he steps up into the saddle <laughs> and then you're going to see the fireworks store. Yeah, there's bad blood in that horse. Sooner or later it's going to show up. This is something you're going to have to get used to, boy. There'll be plenty of time for you to kick up your heels when we get out in the hills, your old stomping grounds. That's where you'll take over. And maybe even teach me a few things. But not now, boy. Not now. I told you you had a way with horses. And that was a tough horse. Lon's got what it takes, I guess. I still wouldn't crush that critter. He'll be ready for schooling pretty soon. well with calves, too. You've done wonders with him, son. I've got to hand it to you. Always in a hurry. You'd think he had a race against time instead of taking that horse out for a ride. Yeah, he's covered that road so many times that you think he was training Starlight to carry him with his eyes closed.
good is it? That's it. You've been keeping things from me. That must be your family. Is that why you wanted to stay in the hills? Well, I don't suppose there's any harm in a little visit, providing one thing. You've got to come back when I whistle. You're not afraid of anything, are you, boy? Any other horse would have gone into a panic at the sight of that snake, but not you. I should have your courage. All right, Jesse James, you can take off your mask now. Hello. You must be from the Indian Head Dude Ranch. Are you one of those fortune tellers who knows all and tells all? Nope, this one was easy. I could tell from the brand on your horse where you're from. And judging from the distance to there, you must be lost. Your calculations are quite correct, my dear Watson. I'm a tenderfoot as green as they come, and I am lost. My name is Jean Barton. I'm the new nurse at the Dude Ranch. I'm Lon Evans. We have the adjoining ranch. Would you mind showing me the trail? I think once I get back on it, I could find my way. I'll do better than that. I know a shortcut. Well, maybe if we hurry, we could make it in time for lunch. You would be my guest, wouldn't you? I can't think of any reason why I shouldn't. Come on, this way. Uh, where's Jean, Tom? That's what I'd like to know. We had a luncheon date, and she isn't here yet. She went out on the trail early this morning. I'm getting worried. Well, I wouldn't worry too hard if I were you. If she'd been thrown from her horse, the stable would be the first to know it. Those nags come back like homing pigeons. Mr. Evans, I'll take your horse. No thanks, Whitey. If it's all the same to you, I'd like to leave Starlight here. Oh, 
Jean, thank goodness you're all right. You sure had me worried. I'm sorry, Tom. But you can thank Mr. Evans that I'm back at all. Oh, Lon, this is Tom Adams. Hello. Glad to know you. How do you do? If you ever get tangled up, he can untangle you. Legally, of course. He's an attorney from Los Angeles. Somehow, Jean got herself lost. Luckily, I happened along. Not bad, rescuing the lady in distress. Always works in storybooks. Now all we have to wait for is a happy ending. I hope you're right. They stop serving lunch in a few minutes. Maybe we'd better order. Oh, certainly. I asked Mr. Evans to join us. I knew you wouldn't mind. Not at all. I never did think three was a crowd. <laughs> I'm awfully glad you accepted my invitation. It's nice knowing a real rancher. Thanks. It's nice knowing city folks. I haven't always lived in the city. I was born and raised in the West. My family moved east when I started nurses training. But way down deep inside, I've always wanted to return. The wide open spaces seem to do something for me. I love it. Me too. I guess that's why I'll always stick to ranching. I envy you. I dread going back to a job in the city when the season's over. I had enough regimentation in the service. You were in the service? I was a nurse in the army. Did you see any action? That's what I asked for, so they sent me to the Pacific. The Pacific? The Philippines? Yes, why? Well, I was there for three years. Really? Maybe we were on the same island at the same time. When were you there? 43, 44, and 45. That's when I was there. And that's when I was in Europe. Well, you two seem to have quite a lot in common. Well, excuse me. I'll see you later, Jane. I uh, hope I haven't broken up anything serious. Oh, don't be foolish. Tom has never meant anything more to me than just a good friend. And for your information, he has no reason to act so possessive. Well, let's forget about him and get back to us. getting better. A few more lessons and you'll be diving like an expert. Oh, thank you. Funny how her diving got so bad all of a sudden. Three days ago, she was teaching me. The style is getting worse. But her tactics are improving. <laughs> well, let's try it again. Now, hold your arms out. Like this? No. Like this. Go ahead. Girl, you're kind of quiet tonight. For the first time in my life, I feel I don't have to rack my brain for just something to say. Words just don't seem necessary. If this keeps up, I know what I'm going to do. Maybe I can help you. The train schedule's in the lobby. Excuse me. Why were you wearing that blindfold the day we met? I... I was playing blind man's bluff. Alone? Yes, alone. I'd like very much to play that game, too. I think I can find my way now without getting lost. Good night.
to your coat. You've got to go help him. You make better time without carrying me. What? What? Yet, Starlight. I thought for a moment that was it. Uh, far be it for us to be butting in on the subject, Mr. Evans, but we think that Lon ain't like he used to be. War has a way of changing men, Yancy. Well, Blame it on the war if you like, but he spends too much time with that horse he's taking a fancy to. Why, you'd think that his very life depended on that animal. And he's nothing but an expensive hay-eating pet. Yeah, somebody ought to make him try and see things right. Lem, I happen to hear what you said about Starlight. I'd like to make a little correction. He's not an expensive hay-eating pet. Just because he's got two strikes against him, why don't you stop trying to put in a third? You can't tell me nothing about that horse. I know him. He tried to kill me. Lucky I got off with just a broken arm. That's before he was broke. Since then, he hasn't once shown the wildness of his father or the violence of his mother. He's not only intelligent, he's obedient and quick to learn. <laughs> you can think what you like, but I wouldn't trade my pinto for two like him. Well, why make it two? You proved you couldn't even handle one like him. Getting pretty late, boys. I'm turning in. Yeah, me too. Come on, Lamb. She is Starlight, just like she promised. But I'm afraid there'll be no more games from now on. Anyway, it wouldn't be fair to look into her eyes and see nothing, just darkness. Somehow she seemed to help me forget for a little while, but no more.
Martino's gone. And that crazy white stallion broke out of his corral. Throw me your horse, Chuck. Sure thing, Liam. Take it. Your pinnacle's dead. Wait a minute, Lamb. You can't shoot that horse. He killed my pinto. That's the best stock horse I ever had. I have every right to kill him. You got nothing of the kind. This is going to be reported to Mr. Evans. Well, while we're about it, we'll have that killer with us. Come on. Evans, that was the work of Starlight. He broke out of his corral. I guess he just couldn't behave any longer. Boss, you just can't trust bad blood. If Lung is my son, Yancey, he isn't. Well, if he was, I certainly wouldn't let him expose himself to a horse that's got a loco streak in him, sure as shooting. All right. All right. I'll have a talk with him. Mom, I'm afraid you're allowing your sentiment for that animal to outweigh your better judgment. In my opinion, he's got to go. Nobody's going to make me think Starlight's mean until I've seen it with my own eyes. Well, isn't Lamb or Yancey's word enough for you? Sure. They didn't see the actual fight, though. All they saw was what was left of one. Sure, I admit the Pinto was killed by another horse, but that doesn't mean Starlight did it. Look at him. If he'd have been in the type of fight they described, he'd have marked all over him. I've examined him from head to toe. He hasn't got a scratch. Even a criminal's innocent until he's proven guilty. Okay, son. You win. But the next time that critter makes a bad move, out he goes. Hello, Chuck. Hi, Lon. The uh, boys tell me you're from Tucson. Yeah, I've lived all over these parts. Kind of like to move around. Get itchy feet, you know. Have you ever heard of an outlaw horse called the Black Phantom? Boy, I sure have. He's the leader of a wild herd. He's raided this country from, well, from here to Arizona. Did you ever see him? No. I only heard about him. They say he's a killer, though. He raids and steals mares, and then always disappears. Completely vanishes somewhere in the canyons. I've heard plenty of stories about him. Mostly legendary. Yeah, the last I heard of him, he'd been killed somewhere in Arizona. But uh, you don't know for sure? No, only hearsay. Nobody knows anything for sure about him. That's why they call him the Black Phantom. I know one thing for sure. He actually existed. I saw him once in a roundup a long time ago, but I'd know him any place. 
And only recently I saw a herd of wild horses in between our place and the Indian Head Dude Ranch. Yeah, maybe he was leading it. They say he always had a herd with him. If I could prove that the Black Phantom is in this territory, it'll clear starlight. And I'm not going to stop until I find out. Knowing how you love about starlight, I sure hope you can do it. Keep what I've told you to yourself, huh? You can depend on me. Hello, Gene. I told you I could find my way. It seems you're the one who got lost. Or maybe you forgot all about me. No, I hadn't forgotten. We've been pretty busy at the ranch. This is the first chance I've had to get on the trail. I haven't got a blindfold on. I came here with my eyes open. Let's not pretend anymore. What are you driving at? Lon, I know the truth. I've known it all the time. Ever since the first time I saw you, you had the blindfold on. You should have left it on. No, Lon. I've looked into eyes like yours before, during the war. You're going blind. I know what it means. I also know that's why you've been avoiding me. And you've waited? Hoping you'd come back. If you hadn't, I was going to the ranch looking for you. I'm not one of your patients. I don't want your pity. Pity? I don't pity you. I don't even feel sorry for you. I'll reserve that for the boys who really need it. The ones who are a lot worse off than you. Men who can't a girl in their arms. He could have any arms. I've shown all the initiative in the first round. I'll be waiting to see what you do in the second. Gal, Mr. Evans, he's still unconscious. The doctor says there's nothing serious to worry about, but that's a bad bump on his head. What do you want to do with the horse? I never want to see that animal again. Do it your own way. I saw him. I saw the black phantom. That's how it happened. Oh, what happened? 
I knew if I could prove that black stallion was in this territory, it had clear starlight. I was getting a drink of water at the spring when I saw him. When I ran to Mount Starlight to go after him, I slipped. That's all I remember. How did I get home? We brought you here. Jean came to us for help. Gee. Turn the lights, will you, Dad? Why? The lights are on, Mom. Some... It's okay, Dad. I knew it was coming. The doctor at the hospital told me before I left. I've been waiting a long time for this. Longer than I expected. There are other doctors. And we'll have the best. Oh, it's no use. Now you know why I've trained Starlight. These to be my eyes. The, the doctor was here. Said for you to lie quietly. Never mind what he said. I'm feeling all right now. How long was I out? For some time. It must be late. I'll have one of the boys drive you home. We can send your horse over tomorrow. There's no use protesting that it still makes a difference between us. It doesn't now, and it never did. You're talking of the stuff that dreams are made of. You'd better go. Don't turn away from me, Lon. Can't you understand? You'd be wasting your looks on a man who'll never see you again. You know what I look like. As if I could ever forget. Then you'll never see me grow old. You'll remember me as I am now. At least, I won't be a burden to you, Jean. With Starlight's help, I'll get along as well as anybody. Of course you will. It's no use. No use pretending any longer. A complete helpless invalid. Nanty, if Miss Jean should come today, tell her I'm not here. I don't want to talk to anybody. Jean. Hello. I'm certainly glad you came over. Lon needs you. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. He's shutting me out now. I know it's because he doesn't want me to see him like this. Pant up in the house, being led around like a child. I know. He's been like that ever since we told him about Starlight. You've got to find that horse and bring him back. If you don't, all Lon's hopes, his plans, will have gone for nothing. Don't you see, Mr. Evans, it's more than just his health involved, but his spirit and his will to live. You're right, Jean. I hadn't thought of it like that. We'll find that horse if we have to scour the whole countryside. Any sign of him? Didn't see a thing. Keep looking. Any luck? Not a thing. Try the south pass. He wasn't around the south pass. Well, let's head back to the ranch.
Nanty, did you hear that? It's him, all right. It's your horse, standing out there as pretty as can be. No bridle, no saddle, no nothing, Mr. Evans. didn't you, boy? to come in by himself. You ain't gonna let him ride him, are you, Mr. Evans? I think Lon knows what he's doing. I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it in my own eyes. He'll be all right. Mr. Evans, the whole north end is on fire. Your cattle will be trapped if you don't work fast. I sent my man on ahead to help.
trace. I don't think we lost a hit. The fire turned to the south section. That's where Long was headed. If he's on the trail, he's beyond our help. We can't get to him. Got one chance. If that horse he's riding has got half the brains the Mong gives him credit for, he'll carry him out through the old tunnel that leads to the meadow. Sure. There's no fire on that side of the ridge. Well, all we can do is hope. You can't do no good sitting here in the trail. Let's come back to the ranch. That's the first place he'd head for. I don't know how you did it, but here we are. <laughs> Sounds like we've run into something. I'm afraid I can't help you. But at least I can give you one break.
You know, folks all over Wyoming are talking about the CNI horse Starlight. They say he's well named, too. He does light the way, doesn't he? Yeah, and for a guy without his sight, that boy sure gets around. Yeah, and the $3,000 reward he got for getting the Black Phantom didn't hurt him none, either. Believe me, they don't come any finer than that girl. If he don't pop the question soon, I'm liable to do it for him. <laughs> she can join my family anytime. Oh, this is wonderful news. You remember that doctor I worked with when I was in the service? You know, the one who performed that miraculous eye operation. Yes, you told me about him. Well, by a very strange coincidence, he's written me that he's going to spend his vacation here in Wyoming. He feels sure he can restore your sight. That is good news. I know this doctor won't miss. And if he does, I've still got Starlight and you. <laughs> <laughs> 